Thank you for joining us on Nationwide Live on the network service of the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. Welcome. And we begin from the State House, where the first meeting of the Federal Executive Council in the year 2020 is now underway at the Presidential Villa. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports that the meeting has been presided over by President Mohamed Buhari, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, ministers and other members of the Council are in attendance. The Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, which is coordinating the meeting, did not make public items slated for deliberations. Some ministers are, however, expected to brief journalists on the Council's resolutions at the end of the meeting. The Federal Executive Council is the highest policy decision-making organ of the Nigerian government. The Senate has condemned the recent abduction and killing of indigents of Plateau states by insurgents. This followed a motion by Senator Estefanos Giang, who drew the attention of the Senate to what he described as increasing cases of abduction and killing of persons of Plateau state origin. The motion urged authorities to intensify efforts in rescuing those still in the custody of the terrorists. The Senate also called on governments at all levels to strengthen the fire service organizations as a proactive measure. The legislature conversed provision of special grants to victims of the recent fire incident in Sabo Market in Shagamu, Ogun State. And still from the National Assembly, the House of Representatives says the Parliament is set to put forward reforms in key areas through legislative interventions. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila, while addressing members on resumption of plenary, said the economy, social and security infrastructure require well thought out approaches to confront emerging challenges. He stressed the resolve of lawmakers to, together with the executive, serve the interests of the Nigerian people. Plenary featured the adoption of motions on the need for urgent steps to tackle Lassa fever, prevent the spread of coronavirus into and around the country, and the need for authorities to act on the resurgence of security bridges in the northeast and some other parts of Nigeria. Meanwhile, six lawmakers elected into the House of Representatives during the recent rerun conducted in some federal constituencies were sworn in. Al-Hassan Adodogwa, who was among those sworn in, re-emerged as House leader. The federal government has expressed commitment to improve the welfare and well-being of the common people through the utilization of recovered looted funds and assets. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, said this at a public lecture marking the 25th anniversary of Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, which has been in the business of anti-corruption in these number of years. Ilyasu Yakubu reports. Nigeria and other African countries have been estimated to be losing more than $50 billion annually as a result of corruption, money laundering, and other criminal activities. The Africa Network for Environment and Economic Justice, ANIJ, has been engaging government in Nigeria and other African countries on the need to utilize recovered looted funds and assets for the benefit of the common people. This public lecture, marking the 25th anniversary of ANIJ, is to extray the successes recorded in anti-corruption activities and proper utilization of the recovered looted funds in Nigeria. 
one of which is the monthly conditional cash transfer of 5,000 Naira to the vulnerable people. And Anij is a key player in that success. All we are looking for is to see that there is peace, there is development. And you cannot have this when you have widespread corruption, when you have conflict everywhere. All these are driver for underdevelopment. And for us, our own goal in Anedge is to begin to engage these issues to see that our people can all come out of poverty. Anedge has been um, of immense support, especially to the social investment programs uh, and the cash transfer program in particular. And that money helped me. I let many work. The coming of this 5,000 naira has opened ways of business for me. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saldia Omar Farouk, represented said, the federal government is committed to improving the lives of the common people. This effort of engaging the government on proper utilization of recovered looted funds for the benefit of the common people People, key players say will bring about meaningful development and eradicate poverty in the society. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakou, NTA News. Border State's Peculiar Security Challenges is the case study of a lecture delivered by Governor Babagana Umar Zulum of Borno State to cost 28 participants at the National Defense College. Correspondent Naja Atu Tijani reports on the focal point of the delivery to national security. Since 2009, Borno State has been a hotbed of terrorist acts, leading to loss of lives and property and the displacement of millions. Additionally, its peculiar challenges are compounded by the terrain and what the governor of the state says is aggravated by poor leadership choices. These issues are being tabled before course 28 officers at the national defense college with the aim of giving them a different perspective on leadership in their capacity as key players in nigeria's security climate create open channel of communication around the vision so that people can understand what is going on and play their role create strategic plans that are workable and follow through for us to stand for what is right tell the truth anyway and that has been our major problem in nigeria now for you to say the truth. The commandant of the college, himself an expert in strategic leadership, agrees. We heard it in past situations. You are not unfortunate. You can turn that around and make it. That itself is a measure of your strategic leadership. Charging the course 28 participants to adopt a mindset of strategic leadership and scientific thinking. Met Ja'atu Tijani, NTA News. The homegrown school feeding program under the federal government's social investment scheme has been applauded by the World Food Program. This commendation was made when a team from the organization paid a visit to the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to partner on ways to strengthen the scheme and boost food security in the Northeast. Ruth Aguele reports. Getting a free meal at school was a luxury for them. But the federal government's homegrown school feeding program has changed the narrative, especially for those who cannot afford a meal at school. As part of efforts to enhance the scheme and boost the nutritional benefits for the children, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is working towards building modalities in partnership with the World Food Programme. In the area of uh, one of the programs under the Social Investment Programme of the government, the nutrition of this food is very important to us. So we are going to explore these areas uh, to see how um, uh, we can improve on what uh, we have uh, on, on ground. So even when we're providing food, we're trying to make sure that we buy it locally in Nigeria to the extent possible, so it's stimulating the economy. If the program is already great, and we might be able to add a little bit of technical support here and there to make it even stronger. In achieving the sustainable development goals of zero hunger through poverty elevation, both parties also hope to work closely to ensure food security, especially for displaced persons in the Northeast. In Abuja, Ruth Aguala, NT News. 
Delivering an effective and responsive civil service to the public is an obligation the acting head of the civil service, Folasha de Yemie Song, is pursuing with vigor. This has been demonstrated through collaboration with development partners across the world. This time around, it is a five-day workshop on applicability of the International Civil Service Effectiveness Index methodology to Nigeria in collaboration with Blavatnik Institute of Government. Government, University of Oxford, England, holding in Abuja. Benny Adams reports. Every modern state has three arms of government, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. While the legislature makes the laws, the judiciary interprets such laws, and the executive is to implement. In the process of implementation, three arms do not implement all by themselves, but through the instrumentality of the civil service. That brings to bear the importance of the civil service in every nation, which borders on this document that has been examined today. It is the International Civil Service Effectiveness Index. It is a 12 indicators index with 60 teams aimed at efficiency for every civil service around the world. This meeting is aimed at looking at modalities to adopt this for effective civil service delivery in Nigeria. I'm confident. Fala Shade Yemi Esson is the driver of the process while the participants here are being equipped with skills needed to collect data that will be used by the index to assess the Nigerian civil service for efficiency. As soon as we are able to join in as a country, we will also be able to identify our strengths because we have a lot of strengths and also the weaknesses we will be able to work on. If you have a strong, robust civil service that draws on evidence and helps the policy making process work in a really effective way, then it can support governments of different uh, political parties to pursue their goals. The index borders on data driven decision making in government policies and implementation. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. And talking health now. Authorities at the Malam Aminokano International Airport have adopted stringent safety measures in the aftermath of reported cases of coronavirus in China. The airport, which is usually characterized by heavy traffic of international flights, is under surveillance. Mohamed Rabiu Ali reports. There was an easy calm at the Malam Aminokano International Airport as a result of reported case of coronavirus outbreak. However, Managers deployed their arsenals at the airport for full protection of air travelers against coronavirus. Strategic areas have been put on 24-hour surveillance. Passengers coming in and out have to undergo rigorous checks. All uh, measures have been taken for us to protect ourselves, especially uh, we were giving marks right from the airport. I think it is when I arrive, I remove it because I feel safe at home. Uh, as you can see, this is what we've been wearing all over. I mean, there's, there's, there's no point in panicking, making, working your way into frenzy. Um, yes, you have to remain calm, first of all. Um, as long as people, um, if, if you feel ill, of course, stay away from people, stay away from large crowds. And I think in this current and climate, it's a good idea also to stay away from large gatherings. It was as a result of these checks. Two passengers were detained not because they are suspected of coronavirus, but they failed to present their yellow card, a prerequisite for entrance. They are likely to be released after vaccination. Officials at the Malam Aminokano International Airport, who declined to speak on camera, told NT News that stringent measures through public enlightenment campaign has been mounted in and around airport to create awareness. These and other measures put in place will no doubt help in overcoming the challenge. Mohamed Rabi Ali, NTA News. Meanwhile, Benue State's Minister of Health has confirmed a case of Lassa fever in the state. The Commissioner for Health and Human Services, Dr. Sunday Ogbabo, who disclosed this, noted that the patient is currently undergoing treatment at the Benue State University Teaching Hospital. Blessing Omeche Ebute reports. According to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, since the outbreak of Lassa fever in some states in Nigeria, 
A total of 258 cases have been recorded with 41 deaths, including a pregnant woman and two medical personnel. Cases were reported in some states as of last week with Kogi and latest Benue joining the League of States. The cases receiving treatment, we have a unit that are specially trained to take care of such cases and cases being managed uh, effectively. He however urged members of the public to remain calm as the state emergency response unit is on surveillance to checkmate for the spread of the virus. He advised people to practice good hygiene and protect their foods from rodent contamination. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ebute, NTA News. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time to take our first break. Stay tuned. <music> Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to join Jennifer in Lagos for an update on the fire outbreak at CMS. Hello, Jennifer. Good to see you today. See you too, Ifoma. Welcome to Lagos. Now, first story is uh, the fire outbreak at Popular Balogo Market in CMS. Now, apprehension of traders at the Popular Balogo International Market in Lagos Island, especially those at Martin Street, has heightened as firefighters and other emergency responders struggle to curtail the ongoing fire outbreak in the market. Uzezi Arure reports that two of the seven structures ravaged by fire have collapsed. According to eyewitness accounts, the fire started when one of the traders was refilling the generator that was already on in one of the story buildings. He was caught in the fire and in less than three hours, the fire had spread to other six structures. This one of them providing a... Um a generator, they started to, they, they prefer to manage the smaller, the small generator. As of yesterday, the thing packed, they have to call an electrician to fix it. And this morning again, they decided to own it again. And that is the cause of what we are seeing soon. It's really unfortunate that something of, something of 100,000 would have solved has caused millions and billions of errors, losses. But this, this is my own shop. It just got burned. Everything got burned. Just as the emergency responders, including the men of the Federal and Lagos State Fire Service and the State Emergency Management Agency and other key players struggle to curtail the spread, two of the buildings caved in. Many times the firefighters have come here. This is the third time they are coming here. And this kind of market, the kind of uh, commodity, billions of naras is what people lost here. This is about two as traders become helpless in the face of the ravaging fire, they started throwing down their wares through the windows to salvage what they could, a situation that made it possible for hoodlums to make away with many items. One of the traders fainted at this point. Fire outbreak in Lagos markets have become a regular occurrence. Four days ago, goods worth billions of naira were lost to fire at the Amuplank market in Mushi area of the metropolis. In Lagos, Uzezi Arure, NTA News. Hmm. Now to security. The quest of the Nigerian Air Force to develop sufficient local maintenance capacity to effectively tackle future operational needs is yielding results as the chief of the air staff has taken delivery of another C-130 aircraft after undergoing eight months of periodic in-country maintenance. The aircraft is a second successful maintenance and reactivation exercise carried out within the country. Michael Olaleye reports. About eight months ago, the chief of the air staff was at this maintenance depot in Lagos to commission the C-130 NAV 917. Since its handing over, the aircraft has been deployed for several missions, prominent among which was the delivery of relief materials to flood victims in Mozambique and Zimbabwe. Now this C-130 NAV 193, after clocking the mandatory 4,000 flying hours, is the second masterpiece, successfully refurbished and serviced at this center within eight months. Aside enhancing the Air Force capability at maintaining its fleet of aircrafts within the country, 
It is expected to offer air power to the Air Force mandate of wiping out insurgency. We are equally undertaking the local reactivation of three Alpha jets and one MI-35P helicopter. It is also my belief that in a few months ahead, we will be here to commission the third C-130 aircraft. That is Nigerian Air Force 918. The Nigerian Air Force is not the only wheel behind the driving vehicle of this initiative, as a Pakistani group has successfully trained more than 19 engineers and technicians in the act of overall aircraft maintenance. One day, the 631 ACMD will become a maintenance repair organization that will not only maintain the Nigerian Air Force C-130s, but will maintain C-130s from sister African countries and in the process generate foreign exchange for Nigeria. The chief of the air staff also inaugurated Buffalo trucks to enable the force perform its mandatory tasks of protecting critical assets and infrastructure. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Now to a unique collaboration. The Nigerian Army is supporting the Actors Guild of Nigeria to produce a movie to correct the wrong impression of the international community on the federal government's approach to fighting terrorism and insurgency. Uzezi Arure reports that the press conference preceding the premiere of the film titled Operation Last Dance was held in Lagos. The Actors Guild of Nigeria, AGN, founded nearly two decades ago, caters for the welfare of actors, especially on issues like sexual harassment, gender discrimination, enhanced professionalism amongst established and upcoming actors, as well as articulate relationships to garner global recognition of the Nigerian movie industry. This gathering was primarily to announce the premiere of the movie Operation Last Dance, which is an advocacy film on the activities of the Nigerian army in combating insurgencies and other security challenges facing the country. Everything about the operation last dance is about the Nigerian army, particularly those fighting in the war area. This is a movie to support the army, particularly those wounded in the fight and the widows of those who lost their lives in the fight. According to the plot, the guild projects the efforts of the federal government in preserving the sovereignty of the nation. It is meant to really project the image of the Nigerian army. The Actors Guild has decided to project and really bring to fore what these men of Velo are doing. All of this while they were uh, insurgents, they were conflicting reports. They tend to portray our military in a different light. And it's not good for any country to grow. It's just our patriotic angle, nothing more. In Lagos, Uzezi Arure, NTA News. Thank you, Uzezi. That's a contribution from Lagos back to Ifoma in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Ifoma, over to you. Many thanks, Jennifer. Now, moving on, Nigeria is gradually adopting renewable energy system as alternative source of power to address deficits in electricity supply in the country. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbunaya Onu, says the nation's quest for energy sufficiency is being addressed by the federal government through various interventions and reforms. Joshua Ojito reports. For decades, Nigeria relied on gas and hydro as major sources of power, which have proved inadequate for the country. The nation is now adopting other sources through renewable energy. Mahmoud Garba is the acting director, Sokoto State Energy Center, and joins other stakeholders to share the success story of renewable energy, which his state adopted to power some communities. I will strongly advise the state government to adopt use of uh, this sustainable energy uh, for different applications in schools, in industries. Don't forget that most of our facilities are in clusters, industrial clusters nationwide. So when renewable energy is uh, taken up, you'll find that you can have uh, off-grid, gated uh, energy supply. Federal government's desire to use renewable energy is also to address the challenge of climate change. We are taking a number of steps uh, and I believe during this workshop, we will be looking at this roadmap. 
which will be very helpful uh, to us in providing energy. So renewable energy will help in producing electricity for us, it will help in producing transportation fuel, and then it will help in producing heat to be used as process heat in our industries. The workshop is expected to come up with a draft document on the implementation of renewable energy in the country. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. 20 billion Naira revenue to the federal government is the target of the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development for the year 2020. And inactive revenue collectors are to face replacements. Mines and Steel Minister Olamile Kong Adegbite said this while receiving reports on revenue optimization in Abuja. Mia Ogidi reports. Investment and more investment to enable the Nigerian government comfortably answer the question, after oil, what next? With a landmass housing 41 solid minerals in its bowels, the federal government targets to widen the revenue base and create jobs. So, 30 billion naira intervention fund was provided for the Ministry of Mines and State Development in 2016. Another 150 million naira for minerals integration but what the federal government gets as a revenue from all these investments is not encouraging from 2014 and 2018 and this ruffle feeders. The ministry should set up a technical committee for conducting audit of mineral production and revenue generation in the past five years. So it's time to check the records, do some self-examination and if possible in as cleansing. Samson Oga, the Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, who chairs a revenue optimization committee, comes up with a 16 point recommendation, basically on governance and finance. This year, we're saying about 5.7 billion, which is an improvement over the past, it's the highest so far. But I don't want this incremental anymore, you know, from 2.8 to 4. Point something to 5. Point something. Let's look by the end of this year, we can do 20 billion. Years. Good job, the Minister says. But the public expects these documents not to be in the executive shells, but on the field to serve as the ministry's financial manual. Mie Ogedi, NT News. The Department of History and Diplomatic Studies, University of Abuja, has cleared the air on controversies over the dominance of Hausa language over other ethnic dialects in the northern parts of the country. Francis Form reports that this was at a lecture which revealed how colonial administration influenced the trend. Observed that Hausa language is widely spoken in Africa extending to the diaspora as a form of broadcast communication. This inaugural lecture by Professor John Edward Phillips reveals that the needs to strengthen military intelligence in the early colonial years gave Hausa language its dominance. In the military, they use codes to communicate. You want to crack the enemy's code, you don't want the enemy cracking your code. Lugard insists that all British officers must learn how so. Participants believe the lecture clears the sentiments around the adoption of Hausa language over other dialects in the northern region of the country. We need to understand some of these historical vibes to be able to understand what is going on in Nigeria. If you don't understand history of Nigeria, you cannot understand what is going on. The language was institutionalized by the colonial masters and they used it for their benefit and their tools. But of course it has also helped uh, uh, a lot in integrating the various uh, tribes. The first in the series, the lecture seeks to bring solution to some of the challenges the country is facing. Francis from NTA News. The launch of the Financial Transparency Policy Treasury Portal, meant to deepen the fight against corruption, has been described by guests on NTA's flagship program, Good Morning Nigeria, as unprecedented and shows government's commitment to transparency and accountability. The guests agreed on this while discussing transparency in public finance management. Alika Opanachi Arua reports. To ensure accountability and transparency in governance, the Buhari administration set up the Open Treasury Account System to enable members of the public access to information 
on the daily financial activities of the government. While commending the president on the initiative, a guest on Good Morning Nigeria says the portal will give the public information on government expenditure as well as the inflows and outflows of public funds. Most of the hue and cry about non-compliance with freedom of information revolve around use of resources, finances. And I'm telling you, for the first time within this few, uh, a month or two, two months, we have noticed that that level of, of demand has gone down. The mere fact that we announced that there is a portal where everybody can go and access information freely. It's highly commendable that we, we have come to this stage as it is just transferring power from civil servants who are going to provide, they're transferring the power to the citizens. Now imagine, and there's no limit. It means that all these constituency projects are under scrutiny. We must understand that we're on a democratic system now. And part of the nuances so far have been that, like I said earlier in my opening remarks, um, things have been kept from the public view. Now, having owned up to it somewhat, and having put these initiatives in place, um, one can only hope that, yes, it will help a, a great deal. They appeal to the public and critical stakeholders to abide by the operational guidelines of assessing information on the portal and be on the lookout for cyber attacks. In Abuja, Alika Opanachi, Arua, NC News. Ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government have no reasons to erroneously commit themselves or the government into agreements without the necessary legal guardians. This is because the federal government has a full complement of legal institutions that can guide the agencies. Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, Professor Tafik Ladan, stated this position in Abuja at an interactive session, Femi Okeo reports. All government ministries, departments, and agencies in Nigeria have their in house legal units. But of recent, issues have arisen that have embarrassed government and given the impression that government was not aware of contracts, treaties, and agreements that were being signed on its behalf. It is in this light that the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, Professor Taufik Ladan, said that in addition to their in-house legal departments, the Federal Ministry of Justice and all other legal institutions set up by government should be fully utilized in advising and guiding agencies of government. He said this is why the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies is repositioning to, in addition to its mandate of training, offer advice and guidance to other organizations. When the law says you are also the apex, you know, our legal research institute, it also means that we can conduct research on our own, we can review any existing law and policy, we can send our recommendations to any arm of government, to any level of government, to any uh, ministry, in fact, agency, even unsolicited. Our job is to engage the relevant stakeholders for them to know uh, what is the current state out of the law. The interaction is to help the institute chart a way forward for its future assignments. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. Finally, all issues concerning the welfare of children in Nigeria will now be reflecting in the budget to ensure adequate provision of their basic needs and education. This is captured in a report on financial benchmark for child protection put together by the Ministry of Budget and National Planning with that of women affairs to end violence against children. Whenever there's a political ethnic or security conflict, children are the most affected. At least 53% suffer diverse forms of abuse, exploitation, neglect, and without any specific budgetary allocation to address such, according to the financial benchmark report. This is now going to change as provision to prevent and respond to any harm befalling children gets a volume of percentage in distribution of public wealth. This year, 2020 is a year of asset stability, and I will not let every goal we set is achieved and surpassed. The two ministries, UNICEF, UN Women, European Union and USAID, whose input 
produced this document to believe that financial provisions for children in the national budget will contribute greatly to raising responsible adults for a better Nigeria. Time to take another break. Nationwide continues in a bit. Lassa fever occurs when a person gets bitten by a rat carrying the Lassa virus. It is also contacted through the consumption of foods that have been contaminated by either the saliva, urine, or excreta of the rats. Lassa fever is deadly, so protect yourself and loved ones from it. Keep rats away from your homes. Ensure that leftover foods are properly covered at night and heat up properly before consumption. Wash fruits properly before you eat. Maintain regular hand wash with soap and water as well as environmental sanitation. Report all feverish conditions and bleeding from the nose or mouth to the health facility nearest to you and don't indulge in self-medication. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <laughs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, I, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately, doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. Governor Obiano expects ongoing road projects in Anambra states over now to Mina in our Enugu Network Center for details of these and other stories. It's over to you, Mina. Thank you very much, Ifoma. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. Anambra state government says it is determined to complete all ongoing road construction projects in the state before the rain sets in. Governor Winnie Obiano stated this while inspecting road construction work at Airport Road along Enugu Onicha Expressway. Ndem Kahlo reports. The road construction is to give access to the people of the area and to allow easy movement to the Umueri International Cargo Airport. The dual carriage road, which is 4.5 kilometers, is to be completed in 10 months' time as 2.5 kilometers have already been cleared and filled with flat right. Governor Obiano observed that completion of the road will boost the socio-economic activities of the area and the state at large, having the cargo airport located in the area. And uh, we also have other ways to get to the airport. The one from the uh, Mweri entrance, then on the Cha Mweri Aguleri. The governor also inspected construction work at Oruku Street on Nature, which is 3.8 kilometers, where he promised to extend the construction to other streets. He commended the army engineers handling the project for their professionalism, while charging the people to always desist their drainages and guard against fire incidents. The governor also inspected the 5.3 kilometers Ezewele Omonachi Afigwe Road expected to be completed by April this year, Oroku Nimo Road, which is 4.9 and Stanford Road, Oka, where he emphasized that the present administration will ensure quick completion of the road. People of the areas express happiness that government has come to their rescue in Oka, Ndemkalo, NTN News. Key in 
Moving into the Federal Government's Action Plan for the Revitalization of Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Wash Sector across the country, Enugu State Government has inaugurated an 18-man interministerial committee to implement the program in the state. Susan Aza reports that the state also declared a state of emergency on the wash sector. Available statistics from World Bank shows that out of the over 191 million people living in Nigeria, about 55 million do not have clean water. Also, an estimated 110 million out of this number do not have access to decent toilet and hand washing facilities, while another 40 million practice open defecation, putting Nigeria second in the list of countries that practice open defecation in the world. To reverse these uncomplimentary statistics, the federal government declared a state of emergency on the water, sanitation, and hygiene sector and came up with an action plan on the revitalization of the sector. Desirous to key into this action plan, the Enugu State Government has inaugurated an 18-member interministerial committee to oversee the full implementation of the program in Enugu State and to ensure that the state meets the Sustainable Development Goal, SDG 6. We complement the various other programs and projects already being implemented by the state government to ensure the provision and availability of potable water and improved sanitation. The chairman and special advisor to Governor Oguani on water resources, Anthony Dubemonia, on behalf of the committee, promised to put in their best. Membership of the committee is drawn from relevant ministries, departments, and agencies in the state, as well as development partners. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. The Enugu State Police Command has paraded 29 suspected criminals arrested by the command for their involvement in various criminal activities in the state. Briefing journalists on some of the command's achievements within the month, the State Commissioner of Police, C.P. Ahmad Abdul Rahman, said the command recovered the sum of 2 million naira, three vehicles, six hands from the suspects. Jude Abugu tells us more. The suspected criminals paraded by the command include a three-man gang of kidnappers that terrorized the state between December 2019 and January this year. According to the state's commissioner of police, Ahmad Abdurrahman, the suspects were responsible for the kidnap of the PDP women leader in Ibuetiti local government area and a Catholic priest in Ozuwan, the local government area of the state. I mean, luck ran out of them when we got wind of the location of uh, Mohammed Ademu. Also paraded by the command was a gang of child traffickers whose prime suspect impersonated a medical doctor working with the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital in Tuku Azala, through which he defrauded many families coming to him for adoption of children. He arrived with uh, the second suspect, uh, Elijah. Elijah, Elijah had not been impersonating anybody, but he specialized in child trafficking, which he took over from his father. Others were paraded for unlawful possession of firearms, armed robbery, and court related activities in Enugu, Jude Abugu, MTA News. And that's a bit from Enugu Ifoma is back to you for a continuation of Nationwide. Thank you, Mina. The Nigerian Television Authority is integrating world-class financial principles in the management of finances in line with the federal government's approach towards realizing full implementation of its financial reforms. Abubakar Usman Akwanga reports that this was the fallout of the 2019 annual conference for heads of finance and chief accountants of the organization across the country. 
was a platform to analyze facts and figures arising from balance sheets generated from previous years financial operations of all NTA stations across the country and to also engage in thought-provoking sessions that will improve proficiency in service delivery. Top on the agenda were the reconciliation of the organization's financial records and the adoption of new approach that will guarantee measures for improved internally generated revenue and expand the market space for effective compliance with the new act. We will discuss all the extant circulars issues by the Federal Minister of Finance. From January to December, we come together to see if our figures are agreeing with wet headquarters. So there will be a lot of things that we will learn and then go back to uh, uh, places of assignments and then to put in our very best. This time around, the Finance Directorate is matching passion with dexterity in operationalizing basic financial principles in tandem with federal government reforms aimed at ensuring basic global accounting standards. To review the Auditor General for the Federation 2018 reports, to reconcile interstation current accounts to commercial based subvention and commercial payback as of December 2019. The paradigm shift is expected to upgrade practice and improve on basic trend in line with global operations of accounting system and strengthen manpower towards an efficient and effective financial management resonated in the 2019 theme of the conference. I employ the government's accountants, the professional accountants, you know, to support this monetary policy of the federal government by ensuring full compliance. Enforcement of the Financial Act, which gives rise to new regime of company income tax and value added tax, comes full stream on 1st February 2020, and the position of Nigerian Television Authority on the fact sheet on the new Act is anchored on financial transparency and fiscal responsibility. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTN News. Nigerian institutions have continued to key into the fight against corruption, despite the latest rating of the country by the Transparency International. Voice of Nigeria is the latest to inaugurate its anti-corruption unit, where the Director General Osita Okechuku said the report of Transparency International does not reflect the achievements recorded so far in the fight against corruption in the country. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. Accountability and transparency are integral parts of the present administration's anti-corruption war. In 2019, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, handed this building to the management team of Voice of Nigeria, Vaughan, to be used as its corporate headquarters, having recovered it from officials that looted the nation's treasury. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Now, the Voice of Nigeria is putting in place measures to stop its officials from towing along that path and to facilitate transparency and accountability. So, Chairman of the Voice of Nigeria Anti-Corruption and Transparency Unit, Rafa Tusalami, says they will play by the rules. We will not be happy to say, oh, one to be in the news for corrupt practices. That is why Act 2 is set up. Prevent it so that there will be maximal benefits to the organization and to, to, the, to the country at large. Despite being in existence since 2004, Vaughan management feel it Good needs facts. some rejuvenation. The prudence in management of public finance has risen so high and is still on the rise. And the loopholes have been plugged to a greater extent. For the Transparency International, their report is like a guide that we should do more to ensure that whoever is misbehaving, whoever is um, stealing resources, is stopped or checked. Because if you just, um, you are indifferent, it will affect all of us, our future generations. So all of us should ensure that we fight this war together. Members are to serve for the period of three years, subject to reappointment. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And now sports.
following the two weeks deadline given the football or ruling body in Nigeria to relocate to Sunday Dankaro House in Package B section of the Moshut Abiola National Stadium of Buja, work is going on in earnest to meet the sports minister's directive. Director of Communications of Nigeria Football Federation Ademola Olajure said the February 6th deadline will be met. The spokesman revealed that NFF is working towards renewing the tenure of the boards of the Nigeria National League, Nigeria Women Football League and the Nationwide League. Uh, I saw a report in uh, social media, somebody writing that the boards have been dissolved. Uh, nothing can be further from the truth. Dominic Tim will meet Alexander Zerev in his first Australian Open semi-finals after his turned world number one Rafael Nadal 7-6, 7-6, 4676 in a four set thriller that lasted four hours ten minutes. Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer filed out in the first semi final match on Thursday before Dominic Thiem and Alexander Zarev clash on Friday. Meanwhile, Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sunday Dari has charged staff of the ministry to put in their one hundred percent to ensure the growth of the ministry and the sports sector in the country. He was speaking on Tuesday at the retirement party of Hawakunu Akinyemi after serving in the ministry for 35 years. I want to also say that because she has served so well, the ministry will not hesitate to reach back to consult her and to involve her in some of the tournaments we have ahead. I don't know anything more than any other person. I chose me to impart life, to contribute my focus to sports development in Nigeria. Until her retirement, Hawakulu Akiyemi was the director of planning, evaluation and monitoring in the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. And next is a quick look at the weather picture. And that concludes Nationwide today. We thank you indeed for being part of it. I am Ifoma Ojinta.